Hi, today I'd like to show you on how to set up an OpenVPN access server within the Azure cloud. That being said, let's just get started. First, in order to set up the OpenVPN access server, you'll need an OpenVPN access image um, uh, that can be uh, retrieved via Azure Marketplace. And then we, will gonna, we are gonna use that specific image and spin up that specific server somewhere in a location where you wanted to have this VPN server located. For example, you know, you can host this VPN server within Europe, or maybe if you wanted to host your uh, VPN server within the United States, you can do that. So with that, with that said, uh, we are gonna just go through real quick on how to basically add a virtual machine. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the steps on how to create the virtual machine, uh, but uh, I'm just gonna quickly give a quick walk, walk through. So in order to just create a new virtual machine, uh, you'll have to log into portal.azure.com. Uh, and one of the prerequisites is basically ensure that you have access, uh, you know, have an account within the Azure. So this way you can log in and then spin up a virtual machine within seconds. So we're gonna log into portal.azure.com and then click on virtual machines and then we're gonna uh, take this further. So I'd assume that you uh, you know how to uh, create a, a virtual machine within the cloud. So, um, and it's pretty straightforward and simple on how we're gonna create a virtual machine within the cloud. Um, it could just be AWS environment, could just be Azure environment. Today, I'm just leveraging Azure uh, environment. So that being said, uh, so you're just gonna log into portal.azure.com and then click on virtual machines, and then you're just gonna give quick a uh, virtual machine name, a region, and then uh, select a region where you want it to spin up and make sure you select the proper image by clicking select all images and then type in for open VPN access server 2.8.5 gen one. So this way that specific version is selected and then ensure that uh, the public key or password is uh, uh, leveraged. Uh, today I'm just gonna, uh, uh, the previous setup that I did, I just leverage SSH public key and then you can just do a quick username and then you just click on next um, and then basically uh, choose some uh, to create a new uh, disk uh, with some uh, with some disk space uh, maybe I just left, left it as about 32 GB and then click on networking and do a quick uh, it's just gonna um, select a subnet and then it's just gonna get a public IP by itself and then click on management and review advanced and then click on create. It's just gonna create a quick virtual machine. That being said, I already created a virtual machine. So, uh, and it, it has its own public IP address. So with that public IP address, uh, I logged in via SSH. Um, so this is the first page. Um, this is how the page would look like uh, from a standpoint of SSH console. So once you log in, uh, via SSH um, with the username and the public key, sorry, the private key that you have got. Um, and then essentially this is how the page would look like. And then as you can see here, it's just gonna ask you to, you know, agree for the uh, end user license agreement. So I'm just gonna say, I said yes. And then it's basically asking you to do some basic configuration, right? So it's basically uh, allowing, asking you to just get your initial configuration completed. So in, in my case, I just accepted as defaults. As you can see, um, um, I wanted to make sure I access my um, uh, admin UI uh, of OpenVPN uh, via the web browser, right? So you wanna make sure you say yes. And then whether this specific server node is basically a primary node. And I said, uh, I mentioned to be yes. And uh, I also made sure that um, uh, specific IP address uh, uh, and which interface is gonna uh, be leveraged, right? So I said one, so that all interfaces can be leveraged uh, to access the admin UI. And you can see here, it's asking you, what is the default uh, change, if you wanted to change your port number for the admin web UI. Uh, so I said, I set it to be default. So again, you know, it's just a few other questions. So you want, did you want your, uh, all your traffic router uh, by default to the VPN, I said to be yes. And I wanna also uh, you know, ensure that any traffic uh, with respect to DNS is also routed through the VPN, I said to be yes. 
and it's just basically asking you if you wanted to do a local authentication or internal DB and I just set it to yes uh, so this way uh, I'm just going to label a quick local authentication with respect to the Unix or uh, Linux system that's uh, embedded and uh, it basically recognized the private IP address schema that's uh, uh, associated with the specific server and it looks like it's a slash 24 subnet and um, and it's basically saying that should private subnets be accessible to clients by default and I want to say yes and then it's basically asking you whether the specific open VPN username is the one you wanted to use for admin UI and I set it to yes because uh, that's the open VPN um, uh, uh, username is the one I'll be leveraging to log into the admin UI within the second here right so that being said once you say yes, uh, it's just gonna do some initial configurations. It's just gonna remove some users and it's just gonna add some users. Make sure it's just gonna configure uh, the profile and modify accordingly. And then uh, it's just gonna you know do some initial certificate configuration and the basic stuff, right? And then it's, it's uh, so that being said, um, so it's just gonna give you all the credentials, right? The the URLs for the admin and the client UI. So for now. We're going to log into both admin and the client UI and then I'm just going to show you a quick uh, walk through here and you want to make sure that there is a password associated with the open VPN uh, user uh, that you used previously for the admin UI access and then I basically just did set up a quick password and then that is all so that's the configuration that you'll have to do to you know to access the open VPN server so that being said I'm just going to quickly uh, go through the UI and then give the open vpn credentials that i that i am gonna that i used uh, uh that i created while uh, configuring the server So once you log into the admin UI, this is how it's going to look like from a standpoint of uh, the user interface. So it's basically saying that this is a server name and then you are allowed to connect to only two VPN connections because I did not, you know, purchase any additional licenses. You can, if you wanted, you can always purchase additional licenses at openvpn.net. Uh, but that being said, so if you can, if you can see here, the current users are to be zero because I'm, uh, I did not connect. Uh, via any uh, VPN client uh, to the VPN server to route my traffic through the server, right? So, so I'm just going to quickly uh, again log into the admin page, uh, sorry, the, the user page, right? So I'm just going to use the same credentials again here. So So it's basically asking you to download, you know, um, the recommended software, right? So in my case, I'm uh, I'm on my uh, I'm on a Windows machine right now for doing this demo. So I just downloaded an MSI. I did run through that, and then it's uh, the the MSI is pre-configured with the profile and the configuration settings. So what all you have to do is basically once you download, run run the installation, it's gonna populate pre-populate with all the information that is needed to connect to your um, uh, VPN server. So in this case, uh, I'm going to connect to the VPN server um, and then uh, I should just be able to um, see the IP address associated with the VPN server to be my IP address because all the traffic is, um, is going to get routed uh, through my VPN server. Um, any connections, any traffic that's being originated from my machine is gonna uh, get encrypted and then uh, send security to the VPN server and then all the traffic will be originated at that point uh, from, from there to the destination IP address. So that being said, uh, I'm just gonna end this video. Uh, it's a quick demo from a standpoint, uh, quick setup, a couple of things you need. Uh, basically, you know, you need to make sure that you have the open VPN 
image. Uh, maybe uh, you want to make sure that you have uh, um, the license if you uh, the license key if you wanted to um, uh, connect uh, more than two devices at the same point at the same time. Um, uh, so that being said, uh, it's a quick uh, SSH session, and then you're gonna do a quick walkthrough of the uh, configuration. Pretty straightforward configuration. It's nothing crazy, and then. If you wanted, you can always, uh, uh, you know, read some documentation with respect to OpenVPN. Uh, if you if you were to just type in, you know, Microsoft Azure BYO uh, Appliance Quick Start Guide, and then it's just going to give you a walkthrough on how to set up the uh, um, uh, your virtual machine if need be. And also, you know, it's just going to give you some explanations if you wanted to. In, uh, in my case, uh, if you wanted to have your own host name, you can always do that. Um, you can always do. You can you can do the configuration under TLS settings if you wanted to um, uh, change your. Uh, let's say for example, if you wanted instead of the IP address, you wanted to have your own uh, enterprise company name, right? You can always do that, and then make sure you adjust your DNS records and make sure you uh, you know you generate your own certificates if you wanted to. Uh, so this way, you're not leveraging the default certificate uh, provided by OpenVPN server, right? So that being said, you know you can always uh, change your configuration uh, however you want it to from a standpoint on you know um, what you want it to do from a standpoint of um, uh, the server, from a standpoint of users. You can always uh, you know create your own users, right? Uh, as you can see here, you know there is only one user. If you wanted, you can just create a new user and then you know add associate license. Uh, so this way, um, your um, employees maybe would log in via OpenVPN server. Um, um, and route all your traffic uh, via this OpenVPN server. Make sure uh, if you want to, let's say for example, you might want to, um, you know, you have 100 users, maybe you want to have a different uh, instance type or virtual machine type, right? Because, you know, all the traffic might not be uh, routed back because uh, it could just be uh, these uh, virtual machines could have, uh, you know, low bandwidth links in case. But that being said, you, you always have uh, access to the documentation of the OpenVPN, uh, and you can always go through the documentation if you wanted to. It's pretty straightforward, and you can, you can always deploy the uh, OpenVPN server in Amazon EC2, Amazon Web Services, but today I just deployed within the uh, Azure, uh, just for a testing purpose, right? So that being said, you know, it's pretty straightforward on how to configure, it's pretty straightforward on how to access. Once you download your MSI, you should just be able to um, connect back um, to your virtual machine um, uh, to, to, to your open VPN uh, I'm not going to connect now as you can see I can just you know it imported its profile I'm just gonna turn it on and then it's just gonna connect back to the network uh, so this way all your traffic from your machine once you're connected will be routed back to the open VPN server that being said um, thank you so much for your time I really appreciate it uh, thanks for watching bye now if you have any questions, please reach out via comment section.